going on everybody? The big guy Rye back here and um, uh, today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about fasting uh, and why I incorporate it into uh, my routine with everything going on and I, I became really really fascinated uh, with this stuff about a year and a half ago and it all started with the, with trying different diets and trying the ketogenic diet and then realizing that that didn't necessarily work uh, as well for me as, as it having carbohydrates in my diet and whatnot. And it kind of led me down this path into uh, fasting, intermittent fasting and prolonged fasting. There's three people uh, that I, I think are very knowledgeable on, on this subject and superior to me in, in every way. I am by no means an expert or anything of that nature. My goal is simply to share with you guys some information, uh, and some things that have helped me progress and hopefully with these other people, you guys can further look into this and see if that, including intermittent fasting or prolonged fasting into your daily or weekly routine or monthly routine uh, could be beneficial. Because I see a lot of comments, a lot of people that don't um, necessarily know about this. And I didn't know a lot about it. You just hear the people in the past and uh, just generally... <laughs> Buddhist and, and just different people that they, they would do these prolonged fast and uh, in very different religious uh, What's the word I'm looking for? different religious stories uh, of People that uh, someone's gonna get really mad at that of, of fasting and whatnot but guys there's three people three people I want you to follow and um absorb their information if you are interested in fasting. And that's Dr. Mercola, Dr. Eric Berg, and Thomas DeLauer. And Thomas DeLauer and Dr. Berg have both been on my conversation with the Big Guy Ryback podcast, available on all podcast platforms, and here on Ryback TV. And you guys can uh, listen to those if you want and, and kind of get the ball rolling on getting some information with this. Uh, I'm doing, I'm finishing a 24 hour fast right now. I got my black coffee and uh, my water here that I, I will I'll have usually a couple coffees throughout the day and I'll do a serving of my wake up limited energy actually which is zero calories and sweet with stevia uh, that does not break a fast and I'll do that first thing early in the morning when I get up which I'll talk more about that with you guys as well I'm going to go through a little list here real quick of some of the benefits of, of fasting guys and I'm going to explain to you why I do it and go from there Fasting could promote blood sugar control by reducing insulin resistance. It allows you to move glucose from your bloodstream to your cells more efficiently. It decreases levels of inflammation, which I could speak firsthand on that, guys. Chronic inflammation, heart disease, cancer, and arthritis. It can enhance heart health by improving blood pressure, triglycerides, and cholesterol levels. It may boost brain function, which goes into the whole ketosis deal a little bit there, which... Those guys, Thomas DeLauer and Dr. Burke, can explain that much, much better. But I can um, speak on that from personal experience on what I've noticed going into a fast and what that does with brain function. It helps improve weight loss by limiting caloric, caloric intake and boosting metabolism. Uh, it also boosts norepinephrine. It increases HGH production. That is a 24 to 72 hour fast, more in the prolonged fasting on that, which HGH, human growth hormone, guys, is a protein hormone that plays a role in growth, metabolism, weight loss, and muscle strength. It could delay aging and extend longevity. It may aid in cancer prevention. Again, Dr. Mercola, Dr. Berg, and Thomas DeLauer. Guys, I came about all this with intermittent fasting, and I think, too, an intermittent fasting is just, it's essentially, you go to bed at night. Uh, you, you eat your last meal at nine o'clock at night, you go to bed at 10 o'clock and you wake up at six in the morning and then you maybe you shower, you get ready and you go and then you make breakfast. You or then you were fasting all night. You not, not eating for an extended period of time while you were sleeping. And then you break your fast first thing in the morning when you eat. Now, intermittent fasting is it can range. There's no right or wrong with any of this, guys. And at the end of the day, I'm a big believer in calories in versus calorie out, calories out. And fasting can help people that have a problem overindulging and overconsuming calories. 
And at the end of the day, it can just give you structure. And, and so I got into this whole thing of doing this intermittent fasting. And I started off at, at, I believe, 11 or 12 hours, which was for a guy that was eating every two hours, every three hours tops for a majority of my adult life was, was quite difficult at first. But then I got used to doing 11, 12 hours, and I went to 13, went to 14, went to 15. Eventually, I made my way to 20 hours where I was not eating, and I did this for a long period of time. I was not eating for 20 hours every day, and then I was eating all my calories in a four-hour window. Another story for another time, but for me, that was a little bit difficult, needing about 4,500 to 5,000 calories a day with my activity. I was having a really hard time consuming those calories eating the healthy foods for the most part, which then in the whole other story started slowing my metabolism down over time. So again, at the end of the day with the fasting, it's very, very important to understand that no matter what amount you do, whether it's a 12 hour fast or a 14 hour fast or a 20 hour fast, essentially at the end of the day, it's calories in versus calories out and while there are a lot of benefits to doing the fasting and blood sugar control and things of that and reducing the insulin, at the end of the day, it's if you need to fast for 20 hours and you, you are okay doing that most days of the week because eating in those four hours keeps you at 2,000 calories a day and you could stick to that, then that is what would work for you. If fasting for 10 hours every day is what works and then eating your calories in a, that that window works for you. That's great. You're going to get a lot of information from a lot of different people. The thing I have found is it is whatever you're going to stick to that will help you stay within your caloric needs and caloric range. Because that's the, a lot of times people when we diet and we try to cut down and people, they do drastic change, make drastic changes with their diet is they will you need 3,000 calories a day. This is just an example of your basal metabolic rate. And you all of a sudden, you I want to lose weight. And you, you cut your calories in half to 1,500 calories. You're going to lose water weight and you're going to lose some, some fat initially. But what's going to happen is your metabolism is going to slow down. And it happens to everybody. Because everybody, we all have this extreme thing. And the majority of us have this extreme nature in us where we want the, the quickest results uh, the best result quick, as quickly as possible. So um, gradually, it, it, it's, it's a gradual thing, guys. And, and fasting is just a way, like I said, it, it gives you self-control. And that, that to me is the really appealing aspect of it, is if you can control your food cravings, if I can control my food cravings through fasting, I'm able then to control other areas of my life because hunger is a very, very, very powerful uh, emotion. It's, it's We all need food. We all need energy to survive. And getting gaining control of that area of our, our life can have significant um, and a significant impact on other areas of our life with that, guys. And for me now, and this is just from my personal experience, I am more of a fan of the prolonged fasting and eating and just eating my meals throughout the day. Again, needing a higher calorie count for me being close to 300 pounds and with my activity level. I find doing one 24 hour fast a week, I get all the health benefits and I always, and I get my lab work done and, and I always encourage everybody with all of this to always, always communicate with your doctor before beginning anything like this. But to check out those other people, Dr. Mercola, Dr. Berg, Thomas DeLauer, and start gathering some information on this and just start implementing it, uh, again, with doctor supervision and doctor approval that to see if it can benefit you and help get you on track on keeping you within your, your caloric range that you need on that, guys. But for me, a 24-hour fast, one day a week, and then I try for a 48- to 72-hour fast once a month. And typically, and you've seen me on the, the Ryback TV and doing the different, the big guy versus food things. And I do like the one cheat meal once a week. And if I know I'm going to go into a 48 or 72 hour fast, I'll typically do a bigger calorie meal going into that to kind of set myself up um, for going into that prolonged fast. Because I find it helps me with my metabolism actually doing this and not only dropping water, but actually going into fat burning mode uh, even quicker. 
on this because my metabolism is firing, keeping my basal metabolic rate uh, as close as possible throughout all of this, guys. Uh, and again, a lot of people like intermittent fasting and they don't like the prolonged fasting as much. There's wet fasting where you, you consume on this. I, I hear this a lot with people. Um, what are you allowed to have while fasting? And essentially, you want nothing with calories. Having consuming calories, branch chain amino acids, the Finnish BCAAs by Feed Me More Nutrition, they will break a fast, guys. Water, black coffee, green tea, matcha green tea, the Wake Up Unlimited Energy by Feed Me More Nutrition. We uh, use stevia and monk fruit, which does not break a fast. Uh, try to avoid anything with aspartame and sucralose. Artificial sweeteners have been shown to break fast. And that is not what you want while doing this. And again, there's more information. These people specifically have videos on, if you hear something I talk about in this, you could Google it. You can look it up on YouTube with these other people and they'll have a video specifically talking about that subject. I just know I have a lot of my followers that are really interested in this. I see a lot of comments asking about the fasting. And the best thing I can do is point you in the direction uh, of these experts and hopefully help you guys and just give you guys personal uh, information uh, from what I do. And again, if you ever have any questions, you can always reach out and we will do our best to try to answer your question or point you in the direction of somebody, again, that can answer your question. But this is kind of a little, um, just a little quick summary here of intermittent fasting, prolonged fasting, and what I do, guys. Uh, a dry fast is um, essentially... No water, nothing, and and they kind of they say a twenty four hour dry fast is the equivalent to a forty eight to seventy two hour water fast, or we're consuming liquids and whatnot. But uh, with the prolonged fasting too, I became really interested in this with the stem cell properties and the healing and the inflammation, which with my back and shoulder and having the fourteen stem cell procedures, which I fast going into those stem cell procedures because a forty eight to seventy two hour fast can allow your body to produce internally more stem cells. So for me, it, it just kind of, with health as the number one goal for me, I find that there's just so many little benefits to just putting this in once a week with everything that I'm doing and giving myself, when I do a 24 hour fast, I don't do any weight training anymore, no cardio. I just let my body completely rest and relax. And that energy that you're usually using to digest food is then able to do other things with inside your body, healing mainly being one of them. So that is where it really, really interests me. Guys, there's a lot of books, a lot of stuff on this. And again, end of the day, end of the day for me to you, I think the main thing with fasting is again, self-control and, and gaining mind, mind power and just internal willpower with food. But it also, it controls your calories, guys. And it's a way... For some people, if they if you're up from nine in the morning till nine at night, and you're not really you have no control, you're you're probably overindulging in calories. But if you just shorten that window, oftentimes you'll see people that just start doing an intermittent fasting. They do a 16 hour fast from when they go to bed, and they don't eat until that point of the next day for 16 hours, and they don't even change their diet and their habits. They just eat less calories because they're not up for as long. And they, they, they start finding a drastic difference in their, their body. So, uh, again, guys, there, there's a lot of reasons why people do this. I think, though, if you're interested, if you struggle with weight loss or and have eating issues, I think it, it, it's something I highly recommend you should look into. And, guys, I'm the big guy right back. And this was my little powwow on intermittent and prolonged fasting. Thank you for watching.
Thank you guys very much for watching Ryback TV. If you could smash that subscribe, hit that like button, share this channel, and for Feed Me More Nutrition on feedmemore.com, save 10% with Podcast 10, click here for my podcast conversation with the big guy Ryback, available on all podcast platforms. Click here. And for more videos of yours truly on Ryback TV, click here. Feed me more.